It's second class view of women. Really. Really. Second class view of women. I mean, this is this is borrowed. This has to be borrowed from some really cheesy, shallow atheist website. Many people are unaware of what the Bible teaches regarding the status of women. And because they have uh, mostly grown up in Western societies, and they're familiar with the laws of the land here, they may think that uh, the norms in Western society actually is what the Bible is all about. Whereas, in fact, they may be surprised to find out that the Bible does not teach what they are now practicing. And we have to draw their attention to that. If they say, well, look, you have a problem in Islam, your religion cannot be true because women only inherit half as much uh, as their brothers, well then, what will they say about the Bible? Whereas, in fact, in the Bible, in the book of Numbers, Numbers, chapter 27, verse number 8, uh, prescribes that, in fact, if, uh, if a woman has brothers, she doesn't inherit anything. If a man dies leaving sons, the sons get all of the inheritance. The only case that a daughter can inherit is when the, the son does not exist. If she has brothers, the brothers get it, she gets nothing. Now many people will complain because in Islam, the sister gets half of what her brother gets. I'm just making the comparison very quickly to show that if somebody complains because the woman gets only half of what her brother gets in Islam, what is that person going to say when, according to the Bible, the sister gets nothing if she has brothers? I mean, anybody just throw it's so easy to put this stuff together, it's impossible to defend it. Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. Well, that's second class, yeah. Moreover, according to Numbers chapter 36, verse number 6, 36, verse number 6, if a sister, a daughter, just inherits in this way, because she has no brothers, she is then compelled to marry within the tribe. She cannot marry outside of the tribe, because the idea is that if she were to marry outside of the tribe, she would then be taking her father's money and transferring it outside of the tribe, and that is not right. The money of the tribe should remain within the tribe, and therefore, if she inherits in this way, if she had no brothers, and therefore she inherits, she has to marry within the tribe. Now, people complain because the witness of the woman in Islam, they say, is worth only half the witness of the man. Now, that's not correctly stated. The witness of a woman in Islam is not half of the witness of the man. And that, again, is not my topic to explain it, but I'm just trying to now make the comparison. But what would those people think if they read the Bible and they realize that the witness of the woman can be entirely cancelled by the witness of men? Or the vow of a woman can be entirely cancelled by the statement of her father or by her husband. We read, for example, in the book of Numbers in chapter 30, verse 6, that if a woman makes a vow while she is still under her father's authority, uh, then her father can cancel that vow when he hears about it. And in the same chapter, the book of Numbers, chapter 30, verse number 14, we read that when the woman is under the authority of her husband, uh, that is, when she is in her husband's house, if she makes a vow, as soon as the husband hears about it, the same day, he can cancel that vow or he can leave it to stand. Now, of course, if a woman has to live by these rules, it will become impossible for a woman to conduct business uh, because nobody would want to deal with her. If she makes a deal with you, if she makes an agreement with you, her father can break that agreement or her husband can break that agreement depending on who in whose house she happens to be living in at the time.